bring out the big guns. A hard craft. We love free materials. We love nature and using materials from that. We have one part of this, but not We do, ones. but we'll let go to see what happens. So, okay, be very careful. Change our name. It was Brambleberry Cottage. <laughs> Hi there. It's mid January. It's time to prune this apple tree over here, among some other things around the yard. So I'm going to give my tools a quick clean and we're going to get started. to bring out the big guns. So we're going to make a craft, a heart craft. So what we did is, if you've noticed in the earlier footage, Paul had pruned our apple tree. And what's great are these suckers that come up every year. We thought, instead of just drying them out and getting rid of them, discarding them in any way, why not make a heart wreath? So we love free materials. We love nature and using materials from that. And out came these beautiful reddish tinted suckers. So um, we are going to try to make a pretty large wreath. In the end as I'm doing it I may decide to cut them a little shorter but right now I kind of like the idea of a big heart wreath. I was looking for something for my front stairway on the deck there and I thought near the front door I thought this would be a great solution just to give a little hint of uh, Valentine's coming. So with these sticks um, Paul had cut some at um, the way he pruned it there were some branches coming out and he really this was his thought and I think it was pretty genius actually these v-shape 
stick. So they'll be like the bottom of the heart and the top of the heart. So, um, I'm sorry, like this. <laughs> so we can have the bottom of the heart and the top of the heart. So we can do, um, so we can kind of use it to wrap it around, but also to tie it to something. Because when we start to turn it, it's going to maybe try to spring back and also it may crack and break. So this will keep it from doing that. So we have a top and a bottom. This was pretty smart. So if you have any that you have sticks that go out like this and you can cut into a V shape, this could be your base. So we have, and use any sticks you want. We just happen to have these from the apple tree and we want to use them. Um, they're wet from the being outside in the winter. So I'm just kind of moving. It's okay if they snap a little bit. I'm going like this to see how pliable they are to test them. Any that break really easily, I'm not going to use. They may snap and that's all right. But some, of, and again, like I said, I'm going to cut some of them. But um, a lot of these, I just want to make sure they're bendable and I can work with them. So... We have some twine that I had on hand. You can use anything that's tough enough. I just happen to like the look of the twine and it's nice and thick and sturdy. So we have really good scissors and there we go. So this is where I'm gonna call Paul over because I'm gonna need him to kind of hold one spot while I'm doing this. Hi! Hi. <laughs> so also there's these you need to cut the branches. Yeah. That's a good idea. So okay. um, let's see, I think what I'm gonna do is maybe have you tie while I hold and we can switch off if we need to. We're going to start and what I would say is maybe tie a knot on the first okay. spot, maybe a double knot there just to get it started and hold it tight. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap, I'm going to take a few more try to get as red as I can with some of these. They are pretty long. Maybe one more. I'm not sure how many I'm going to use yet um, or if I'm going to trim them. But then I'm going to take them and wrap the rest of them. And then I'm going to do it again. If you could cut me another piece. I'm going to do it through all of them. And double knot each way you go. I don't mind the twine showing. I, I really like that. So Nice natural look. Right? Yeah. yeah. In fact, um, I'm kind of wondering if I want to, these are just double knotted. This is just going to give you that first start to make sure that they're holding. You tie um, and I'm... Tie another one towards the bottom maybe? Yeah, so what I'm, and then towards the end, I'm gonna do like this loop thing so it kind of wind it around so you don't just see a bunch of knots. This is just to kind of get it started and hold them together. And you know, go a little bit longer and thicker so you know it'll hold. That should be tight enough. So now this is where I bend a little to see where it bends and if I can do it easily. They may snap. Be careful. Where should I trim them? So I'm thinking where we want to bend. So there's a good bend right here in the middle so I'm going to keep that but I want to maybe cut right about here. We want to cut all that excess off. And we're going to attach it to. Yeah, so now we're going to, as we're bending this, I just want to see where that bend is. Okay, so I want to take, see how we're doing this. I don't want to do it here, but I don't want to do it in the very oh, end. To join them together? So, yeah, so let's say somewhere over here. Okay, well that's going to be right at the tip, right? This is going to be right at the very end? Well, okay. Because that, well, that's where the other point will. Yeah, I just want to leave a little bit off and I can trim it later. Oh, right, right, I just yeah. want to make sure we build up that strength. Got it. So one towards the top of the V, the tip there, and then at the actual V at the bottom where they come to get the whole bases, we're going to do it again just so we have a double. So now you just kind of have this, it's a little curved, but it's also like this. But this is how we want it, it's just the beginning here. So when we, when we do this again, I just want to make sure, okay, yeah, I think we have a good bend here. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but on the other side. And let's see, we have about four sticks here. So let's gather four sticks. Nice red ones if we can. Most of them are on this side, so we're gonna get it on the other V. Now it's gonna we're gonna need much more string and we're going to really have to we might have to do this a few times because it's not just on the V. Right. We have to have it trouble. overlap. We right. have to. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And we're 
going to do lower on that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is on that V, this is really smart, Paul, okay. to do that V because I envisioned it differently. And Paul's the one who, so I'm going to give him credit because we'll this see is. We'll if it works first. But it was really a great, smart idea. No, it really was because now it does this V shape and it holds it together really well. Okay, so now I'm taking where the V comes together here. I'm going to loop them around both of these, um, both of these group of sticks around the whole thing at that tip of that Y. And Paul, I'm gonna have you only hold it. Do a really good knot. We need I need his strength. I have arthritis, so I don't have the best strength in the world, but we have arthritis, but not yours we is do, worse. but yes, mine is definitely. And then I'm going to knot on the other side. I'm gonna give a little extra strength. So now it's giving us a little more strength here. Now we have, remember we have this top V, so what we're going to do is now we have to try to shape it. So we're going to kind of bring this down a bit. Remember we want that V pointing up. We want to turn these around the same, right? Yeah. Yeah, so on that, I'm sorry, yeah, so on that side we want to do the same as we did to the other, trimming it all the same. And let's, Something like this. Yeah, let's try to curve it. Down here. And we're going to attach these to the branch. To the V first, right? To the V, yeah. And then again towards the bottom. What we need to do is get right. this again where that V is, where we take all the sticks, where they're kind of overlapping, and where that V comes at a tip there. We're going to do it again. Yeah, it's really kind of yeah. not as sharp of a thing as I was hoping to. Yeah. So just to give it a little bit more, we're going to really work hard on this part because we have to strengthen it. So past this V that we have here connecting them, we have, I brought the sticks down kind of low. And again, these are going to be trimmed later. But right now, we're going to actually go a little lower than the V because I brought these sticks past that because it needs to hold that heart shape. So we're now training this to bend this way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold this. I'm going to kind of hold these sticks against me, and then I'm going to pull this down. Try not to take the string with you. So we're going to take it from the bottom, loop it around the bottom parts, and this top part, and we're going to. Together. Yeah, we're going to need like a good piece. Hopefully, you cut that long enough. And we're going to um, like quadruple knot it to make it nice and tight and strong. I'm going to let go to see what happens. So, okay, be very careful because it might go fling. <clears throat> this string is just holding it in place, pushing it down. So now we have the basic shape. So we're going to train this for a while. I don't know if it'll last. I don't know if it's going to stay <clears throat> this whole time. But we're hoping that after a while of sitting there, it'll kind of make its shape. And you want these, again, you don't want these dried out. You really, the key is having them wet, the wet branches. And you need them, you know, what I was doing before. I don't know if I showed that, so I'll show it here. You just want to say somewhere in the middle and somewhere towards the end. You just want to kind of bend and make sure if you hear a snap or they just break in half, it's not wet enough for this. So you want it to, and then when you let go, you should still see a little curve. You want to know that it's pliable. And then we can always trim later, but I keep it long the whole time. We can always trim it after. And I want to know where that bend is. That's going to direct me. That's my loop for the heart. So all this excess we can cut later. When you cut it too early, um, you're not going to have a lot to work with and it's going to be hard to grip it. And I wanted it long enough so I can take this and the bottom and kind of connect them. So after we can trim, we can take the, the string off, this whole string, we can take it off. I'm hoping I have enough sticks too to really hold that string. But what I'm going to do is let this sit for probably 24 hours and make sure that it really 
starts to bend and it trains it to stay in this shape. If that doesn't work out, I'm going to have to have a plan B, but I'm determined because I really want to use this, <clears throat> these free sticks, and I really want to have like a little free stick heart wreath for the front uh, step. So let's see how it turns out. I'll come back in 24 hours and show you how it turns out. Garden tools take so much abuse during the season. Um, sometimes we're so busy we don't have time to stop and clean them. So a little WD-40, a little sandpaper. I like to use these sanding discs that I've discarded when they get too uh, clogged up from the sander. They're still great for sanding projects like this. Sanding the rust off, a little WD-40 to clean them off um, and also protect them from future rust. A little TLC in the winter time when you have the extra time goes a long way in keeping those tools handy for years to come. You can see how much rust I'm getting off of there. Kind of a lot. So it's kind of embarrassing that I've let my tools get this rusty, but again, you get so busy during the season, um, one project seems to run into another, so it's hard to take. It's hard to find the time to uh, take the time to do this. But it only takes a few minutes, and winter is a great time to do it. Get everything ready for the spring, and instead of uh, letting your tools rust out and buy new ones, you'll keep these lasting forever. Now it's not perfect, but it's in much better shape than what it was, and that coating of WD-40, or any kind of oil really will work, uh, helps keep the moisture away and keeps, keeps that coating of rust off for the season. And going forward, I'm going to try to keep my tools cleaner uh, throughout the season, but failing that, winter time is a great time to catch up.
I wanted to show you how this heart wreath came out. It did not make it. This was a total chance um, that we were hoping it would take and it didn't. It could be the sticks weren't um, pliable enough. It could be they were just too heavy for the rope. I didn't have a form to go by so I was kind of making my own heart. So what I did is when I took it took the part the string that was holding the heart down to the base here the V that we had done which is a great idea but that popped off the whole thing just spread out and uh, just came out of the rope so what I decided to do was I, I kept at it and I kept pushing it back down into a heart shape and then I made that center rope again pulling it to the bottom tip of the heart uh, the V came off, so I left it off, um, and what I decided to do was just strengthen with more rope, but now I had this string going down the middle. So I kind of masked it with, uh, also the heart is smaller now too, but I kind of masked it with some Arborvitae that we had in a vase in here, and it's actually still okay. So I decided to put that in um, around the heart, just to add some greenery to hide the rope. It's not ideal, it's not what I was envisioning in the beginning, but it's still a heart shape. It's a little bit smaller, a little more rustic, um, but it does mask the rope, and it was something for free. You know, I, I had the Arborvitae, I had the sticks. When we pruned the apple tree, we had twine on hand. Um, I did not have a form. I didn't want to buy a form. I just really wanted this to be a free project. And with some ingenuity and with some tenacity, when you really just stick to something, you might be able to come up with something. Is it ideal? It's not too bad, but it's, it's not ideal. No, it's not what I intended. But we have a wreath and it's something cute that could go out on the porch, on the front porch. It's just for a couple of weeks. It's, we're just a couple of weeks away from Valentine's. It's something that I'm really thrilled that I stuck out because it, it looks like a heart. It's really cute and it's free. Um, it's not something I want to tamper with too much or hang up because it probably won't survive it. So I'm just going to put it on the porch next to our lantern just to add a little bit of Valentine's uh, decor to our front patio. There you have it. another week yep. and this was you know a productive week not super fun and exciting but I enjoyed it yeah we got some stuff done yeah so we got to um, do some gardening here in winter as much as you can gardening you say even in winter yes so as much as we can right exactly yeah. Yeah. so we did a few things and we're going to just give you a few tips for January and February because yeah. we're heading into February now so right. for the winter so for these two months especially um, even though we're kind of done with January these are the things you should do so we'll just start right um, as you saw in the video I did some pruning um, of our apple tree uh, the rose bushes and what else did I do with the snowballs snowball bushes um, last year I trimmed them around this time and we had a beautiful year for snowball bushes. We did. So oh my happy. If I don't prune them back they get really lanky and really kind of droopy. Um, we had tons of blooms this year. It worked out really well. So I'm going to continue pruning them into in the winter like this. Yes. And they, really well. they were beautiful for cut flowers but also just on the bush. They were yeah. really, really lovely. Were, yeah. um, we even had dug up a baby one which is really great because right. they will just start sending shoots up new babies. Yeah, if a branch is uh, kind of on the ground, it was on the ground under some mulch I think and it rooted there so we 
Yeah. Left it and dug it up and transplanted it. So it and was, that's growing well. It was so exciting. We moved that into the secret garden, so that was great. So we're hopefully going to find that it does that. We may have to change our name. It was Brambleberry Cottage, but we may have to change Snow, it. Snowball Bush Cottage? No. <laughs> but anyway. Number one, pruning. Yes. Number two, mulching. Even at this time of year, mulching with like pine needles, um, if you had crumpled up leaves with your lawnmower in the fall, that you want to put around your um, plants if you haven't done it already, and obviously not when there's snow on the ground, but anything if it starts to um, drift away from the wind or whatnot, um, maybe get it back there to the, around the plants. You don't want to cover it so much that it, you get root rot, but you definitely want to give a light coat. Um, insulation for the winter, right? You do, and yeah. you don't want to push it all the way up to the bush because um, you will get maybe it will probably get rotted. So, right. yeah, it's kind of covering the root area but not crowding the, the uh, trunk or the mm -hmm. stem. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, keep feeding your compost pile. Um, we like we use a compost tumbler uh, during the warm months, but it doesn't work so well um, over the winter. So we have a kind of a pile that we use for the winter months. And we keep on feeding it uh, kitchen scraps, but we also make sure we add some brown material, like even some newspapers or uh, paper bags, those kind of things. Um, you have to make sure you have enough uh, brown material along with the kitchen scraps. Yes. Um, that compost has really served us well. Really has, so. and it's free and easy, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yes. Number four. Make sure to clear all your pathways, walkways, driveway, um, sanding and salting, really important for your safety. So, yep, it's a big mess in the spring. Um, you have to kind of clean up that sand by either sweeping it or bl using a blower, whatever you have to do. So obviously it's a big mess then, but it's really important now, so doing that. One tip I will say, if you do use salt, please keep it away from your plants because that it will usually fry the plant a little right, bit yeah. so you definitely don't want to injure the plant so uh, the best thing would be to use sand but if you have to use salt just make sure you don't go near your plants right and also um, make sure both like if you have two doors make sure they're both shoveled out and cleared in case for emergency crews you know or that, that sort of thing Sometimes most importantly to, amazon, uh, amazon emergency delivers. emergency amazon deliveries right, absolutely we need that folks make sure your sidewalks are, are well cleared, you know, so nobody slips. So absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. you don't want any of those uh, precious Amazon packages getting broken. We do not, or any injuries either. I suppose, yeah, no, we don't. Tribe, so. so that's very important. Yeah. And number five, planning your spring garden. I think that's one of the most uh, enjoyable things to do in the winter is kind of plan out what you're planning on doing in the spring. Um, it's kind of exciting. It gives you that flavor of, of spring, that kind of promise of spring. So I get excited about that part. It's very exciting. Planning on yeah. what you're going to plant where. And also it's important so you know what seeds you're ordering or what plant, what, uh, plant you're going to be buying um, and what's going to go where. Yes, and I would add to that, um, consult your log. If you kept a log uh, through the years, we did not. So no, I think we, we kind of made a pact to do that now. So we're going right. to start making notes um, yes. because it's important to go back to and look at what worked, what didn't. Exactly Maybe things right. didn't work well planted together. Um, you can research everything, but it's really yeah. because your soils may be different than even your next door neighbor. So you never know. So it's really important to make luck. So consult yeah. your consult your log or your, yeah. your journal, whatever you have for um, keeping notes is important, which we are definitely going to start doing this year. Yes, yeah. we are. Number six, order your seeds and bulbs. It's a great fun time of the year to be doing that. So when you've listed out what you want to be doing and you've planned out your garden, order those seeds. Um, even the bulbs, you can do that. You don't necessarily plant them yet, but you want to do that. And it does take time for them to come in. But this is a good time to plant things like lettuce and kale, spinach, um, broccoli, cauliflower, potatoes, peas, onions, leeks, those kinds of things. So you definitely want to um, maybe even start them indoors a little bit and then plant them outside but February is a good time for that. Something you can plant earlier in the spring that do okay in the colder yes colder weather. We're in zone five by the way so that's we kind of have that take that into consideration. Yes. And number seven is actually starting the seeding indoors. So mm -hmm. once those seeds come in um, start your seeding indoors. Uh, something we did for a while we had heat mats and the grow lights 
Um, we had all that, but um, I, we just stopped doing that thing after a while. It just became like a lot of work. So, okay. So the truth is, our daughter majored in environmental science, and she was our gardener here. She was. Uh, when she left, uh, oops, <laughs> we were kind of stuck at first. Um, she had her own garden to grow, so um, we attempted. Um, to keep up the garden, and we're we're learning now. We're I think we're doing okay now. Okay. Um, we're novices at this. We'll ask our daughter a question every now and then, but also um, we don't do the indoor seating as much. But that's something we want to try probably next year. We're giving you these tips because maybe you do. Yeah, um, exactly. We we have this situation where we don't have a greenhouse yet because we don't have an area where we can put it where there's enough sunlight uh, and also a heating source it would be a big expense right now that we just aren't ready for yeah. so um the best thing would be to have like a little section in your we, we used to do it in the basement but i i do worry about the moisture in our cottage uh, so i worry about mold growing so yeah. we're trying to work that out but i'm hoping by next year or the year after we'll have that situated what mind. we might do is maybe get the plants early spring and right. do it that way yeah. so you That's can do that idea. as well but at least we'll have we know what we'll want to plant and we'll get that prepared we may even get some seeds and plant it later right outside seeds, but yeah. it is really important if you can do it it probably have better success if you can plant inside so if you can do it definitely do that this yeah. is the time to do that right. exactly. so just yeah. a little note Number eight, my personal favorite is repurpose uh, outdoor finds and nature, right. things you find in nature. Um, we've talked about our pine cones a million times. It's a very simple decor for the winter. I love it. I love its simplicity and I love that it's right out my backyard and I'm not destroying anything in nature because they're going to keep coming back. So that's really great. Sometimes I save them because we have some slim years where we don't have pine, as many pine cones. So. I tend to save them anyway, and after so many years, I might throw them out and refresh them when we have a big year of pine cones again. It's usually what every few years we start. Years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is definitely a good year for pine cones. The nice big fat ones, and they're yeah. everywhere. They yeah. were, yeah. yeah. So we have a lot of squirrels too. But um, the pine cones, we have arborvitae, so we use uh, clippings from that. Arborvitae, once you cut them, just a little note, that's it. It doesn't like from this one area, it's going to be sparse in that area. So you don't want to be too crazy with your cuttings. Um, I went a little crazy with it, and now there's like it doesn't grow from that point where that is. So I'm going to probably start alternating different arborvitaes, and we do plan on planting more down the road. So that. We have pine branches, all kinds of things. Sometimes we're growing a lot of moss, which is my, I, I'm very excited about that. It's my personal favorite. So once we start getting a bunch of that, I might actually plant that in a pot, nice. which is neat. Um, so any of that kind of stuff. And this week's craft, we purposed uh, a natural material, right? And you will see, yes. And as you saw in this video, we have um, the craft, yeah, yeah, with repurposed sticks when you were pruning. So exactly. So yeah, thank you for reminding me because I forgot about that. Yeah. But uh, yes, so that's exciting. That's fun, yeah. Yeah. And number nine, uh, cleaning your garden tools and sharpening, sharpening the blades, that sort of thing. Um, when I did my pruning earlier, I cleaned the tools down with rubbing alcohol as you saw just to prevent um, passing a fungus or disease from one year to another or one plant to another so make sure to do that when you're pruning especially things like apple trees are very susceptible to disease mm -hmm. so cleaning the rust off you know all your garden tools tend to get rusty um, with a lot of use or they get sap on them or that sort of thing it's important to keep them clean and I know for me during the season I'm a little too busy um, or overwhelmed with all the stuff going on to, to actually clean them well. So I, I'll do a quick clean as I go, but, um, but in the winter is a great time to really sand that rust down, give a protective coating of, uh, of oil like WD-40, something like that. Um, it keeps your tools lasting longer and rust free. So That's a good yeah. one because that we didn't always used to do that and that did cause some issues and now we know why, but yeah. Yeah, we just never made the time yeah. in, in years ago and now we're really making making a point to take care of those tools. That's an important one. That's an important one everyone. So good good tip. Number ten, if you grow chives, you can take this time of the year to dig them up or a portion of it and you can force them indoors. And what does forcing mean? Oh uh, well it gives them a, a new a new spring so they start growing. You know it, it tricks them into thinking it's spring so they'll start growing again indoors. And then you have fresh chives on the countertop. 
Yes. So it's a great time in the winter to do that. So how you force them? We bring them in and plant them inside, and after after a week or two, they'll start sprouting. Well, maybe a few weeks. The heat kind of forces them. It, it basically tricking them into really growing. We do like chives. We do grow them outdoors, so it is really nice to have that indoors. So, and we want to spread it more. So, we only have one small plant, but we in that one plant we do use it a lot. Yeah, yeah. and we so. usually cut them when it's getting close to the end of the season, and we freeze dry them. So that's really great. You can easily clip them and put them in at recipe, which is great. Yeah. So we haven't forced our chives yet, but it's something I plan on doing this uh, this winter because it's uh, it's something we use all the time. We do. And number 11, invest in new tools. And if you have some that are just broken or not working, now's a good time to buy them so you're ready for the spring. When the, you know, the planting season and whatnot, you want to make sure you have all the tools you need on hand. So we do actually have to invest ourself, uh, our, ourselves. We, um, we do. Um, we have some uh, tools that we've lost the spring on them. We have some that are just beyond just cleaning them. Sometimes they just dull and they get too rusty and they're beyond repair. So there are some, especially hand tools, I think. I think it's the hand tools we have to replace. Okay. And we do have to invest in a lawnmower, but we won't be doing that yet. No. Um, we were using a push... A, a real mower with, with a reel. It doesn't... Yeah. Not a standard gas-powered mower. We've had a real mower for years. Sorry, I'm not sure how my eyes are right now. Paul and I had a giggle fit. You'd have days like that where you're just laughing a lot. And, oh my God, like crying laughing. That's what... Yeah, where you're doing an ab workout here because you're laughing so hard. That's what's happening. So, those are our tips. Yes. <laughs> So find out your zone and where you grow, um, what you're going to grow in that zone, and um, that helps. That's a, it's just like an added bonus tip. So bonus tip, find out what your zone is and find out what grows well in that zone and plan your garden for that. And when you actually do plant things, make sure it's for your zone. Um, if you want a perennial or if you want a, um, a biannual, whatever, if you want those types of things, make sure you have it for the zone that you're in. So those are our tips. We are by no means experts at all, but this is, and we're not telling you how to garden. These are just tips that we do and that's helped us in the past and um, we're learning as well, but we're just telling you how we do it. So um, hopefully that's helpful to you. I don't know what zo whatever zone you're in. Obviously work that from what we told you in your zone. But some of these are pretty basic tips right. that go pretty much everywhere around the world, especially like the cleaning your tools and pruning your plants and whatnot. But as far as what to plant, um, you obviously you have to check your zone. But if you're lucky enough to be in a zone or in an area that you just don't really have a winter and it's just it just kind of cools down a little bit you probably can grow vegetables and fruit all year long and lucky you right. um, but I do we do love our season so oh, we course, do love yeah. that and this is as we've told you in other videos it's kind of nice to have this time to kind of hunker down and yeah. and um, do the hook a thing um, which we are totally loving that vibe it's also fun to kind of take that little break and plan your garden because it gives it a little rest it gives us a little rest this is also a time, another bonus tip, this is also the time, like, um, not exactly now, but maybe even buying, if you have access to these materials, I don't know if your garden centers around you carry it, but you definitely want to think about amending your soil. So, and maybe in the spring, you can, um, so that's that might actually be maybe a spring thing, where you want to get a test kit, test your soil, send that out. There's a lot of people you can send it to. A lot of colleges and universities near you will do this sort of thing, especially if they have that major where there's anything to do with the environment or um, I, what else would there be? Horticulture, whatever. They usually have this um, opportunity where you can send it to them and they'll send you the results back and then you know what you need to add to your soil. Right. So that's something like, even if it's, if it's just to get into your head to start doing and then like some point in the spring you can amend that soil and prepare your garden. Yeah. So that's just a little tip for you. Maybe now, but especially depending on your zone, but you might want to do something just to kind of have in the back of your mind to prepare to do for the spring. So I think that's all our tips today. That's about it, yeah. So yeah, so this was all about getting excited for spring, yeah. um, even though we're still in winter, and preparing for that garden for that time. So 
Uh, winter's a fun time to prune and get that rest, give your garden that rest, and plan. Wouldn't you say? I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, we wish you a wonderful last few days of January. And so for January and February, remember those tips. Um, hope that helped in any way. Um, there's lots of information on the internet, um, but I hope we helped a little bit. Um, we hope that you have a wonderful day, and we will see you again next week. If you're looking for any videos about the garden, you want to see what we've done. If you're new to our channel and you want to see what we've done in the past to our garden, um, we hope that you'll catch the videos at the end for uh, the two suggestions there at the end that maybe will help you plan your garden. And sometimes we watch uh, a lot of gardening videos at this time because it gets us starting to plan. It's a great time to get inspired yeah. for your garden too. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so thanks so much for joining us.